All right. Um, GSC. No, not Oddish. Whoa. Um, GSC Guide Part Three. We are going to talk about the sleepers and their dynamics. We will start with Eggy because it's first alphabetically. Um, Eggy is a sleeper that doesn't always run sleep. Uh, it takes advantage of its status as a sleeper to bait in Zapdos and just sometimes explode immediately on it or to stun spore it. Eggy is most commonly absorbed by Zapdos. It can also be absorbed by Snorlax, uh, Raikou, Vaporeon, pretty much any sleep talker can absorb Eggy. Um, so, that's why it, and so since it's so easily absorbed, it really has to get creative to be super, like, to perform its role as a sleeper. So sometimes it runs double powder, sleep powder, stun spore, and, uh, bluffs like it's just stun spore, and then it sleep powder something later. Or it can run Miracle Berry in the lead slot, and if it matches up against a, another sleeper, it can sleep them after taking their sleep. Because Miracle Berry is Lumberry, and in this generation, what that means is they sleep you, you wake up immediately because of your berry, and then you sleep them. So that's what Eggie does. Um... Yeah, sleep plus boom. It's a two for one mod. That is the idea behind Eggy. Gengar as a sleeper. Um, it often can land, like, it depends on what the opponent's sleep talker is, because Raikou is a default response on teams that have Raikou or Snorlax, and both of them commonly run sleep talk. Um, but on teams that, but Gengar doesn't commonly run hypnosis. So on the occasion it does, it can often maybe land it against like a Steelix or a Tyranitar, most notably Tyranitar. Gengar kind of sucks when it misses Hypnosis, but if you pit, then great. It can give you an out against uh, escaping Tyranitar alive rather than having a Destiny bond it. That's what Gengar Sleep does. It's also, uh, all the sleeps are good last, like, insurance against non-sleep talk uh, boosting lax. You can just sleep it and then phase it. Sleep lasts one to six turns in this generation, which is brutal. So, uh, other sleepers. Jinx is probably the most notable sleeper right now. Maybe need it. Maybe eight. Well, Eggy's coming back pretty big. Um, but Jinx is the fastest of the lead sleepers, which means it's usually pretty safe to sleep um, when it's like in the lead slot. Snorlax also is the lead is the sleeper, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Jinx is always carrying Lovely Kiss. It's the only sleeper that always runs the sleep move. And it gets away with it, because it punishes Zap the default sleep talker in Zapdos because Ice Beam. And it can thief Snorlax trying to absorb it. And Jinx overall Usually about four, uh, three to four of the opponent's team is weak to Jinx, if not five Mons. But it does struggle against Snorlax. Now Jinx, if it's running Psychic, isn't walled by Cloyster, but if it is running Psy- if it, uh, is just a mono Ice Beam, then Cloyster can spike on it once Sleep has been thrown off. Jinx can sub up against stuff, um, it can Sleep something. Like, uh, Snorlax comes into Absorb Sleep, and then you can Nightmare it, which means while the Mon is asleep, it'll take 25 damage, 25% of its HP and damage every turn. So that can really force some uncomfortable switches, because it's the only thing that can absorb, um, your, the only thing that can absorb your sleep is a, that can take Jinx one-on-one -on -one is your Snorlax, and it gets Nightmared. It's taking 25 damage from Nightmare, plus your Ice Beam damage. Yeah, so things can get messy. Jinx does love a double edge. Shockingly. It does a bajillion. Snorlax versus Jinx. You see, you do love a double edge. It does, it does hurt, though. Um, 
Oh, we should, since we're also talking about sleep talkers, Heracross is a notable sleep talker. It absorbs pretty perfectly from Nidoking. Does not absorb the other sleepers. Because Gengar just walls it. Gets to fish ice punches against the opposing team. Um, Eggy psychics it. Uh, sorry, where was I? Um, oh, Heracross is a sleep talker. Yeah. It doesn't, like, you can pivot into Absorb Sleep and then come back later in the game. Um, Milk Tank is a Heal Beller, so that's kind of notable. Nido King is, uh, absorbed by Zapdos and Snorlax and Vaporeon. Especially if it's Thunderbolt, or if it's not even an electric move. Um, it tries not to sleep into Zapdos. That's what it wants to do, is... Like, maybe Ice Beam Zapdos on a Switch or Thief as Zapdos. Because, uh, I, like... Nidoking's Sleep is pretty much the freest thing to absorb with Zap with Zapdos. At worst, you're taking 40% from an Ice Beam and you're healing that off pretty quickly. Um, yeah, Nidoking's Sleep is more of a... It just r stands alone on the power of I have a sleep move. Because sleep is busted in this generation. Raikou is a sleep talker that absorbs the all the sleepers except for Nido King. Yeah. Because it's bulky, it's fast. And it can threaten them with with hidden power or thunder, respectively. Snorlax can be a sleep talker or a sleeper. If it's uh, using Lovely Kiss, it has to give up on some coverage, but it very rarely runs Lovely Kiss, so often the lead slot a Lovely Kiss Snorlax can just sleep a cloister. Uh, the unexpected sleep often does not get absorbed by a sleep talker. Which is pretty great. Um, and Snorlax is one of the better unexpected sleepers. Probably the best unexpected sleeper. Because things that check it don't often run sleep talk. Very, very rarely will run sleep talk. Me, a uh, lovely kiss belly drum is a good set. Lovely kiss, double edge, curse, EQ, just kind of like really offensive stuff works really well. Where double edge, curse, rest, lovely kiss also works great with Tyranitar support. Um, next up, oh, and Snox is sleep talker, absorbs sleep from everything, literally everything. Doesn't want to get boomed on or thieved. But it just walls the sleepers eternally. And if it's curse sleep talk, it can curse up on double edge spam. If it's not, it can just still land. Like it can body slam all over the place. It can double edge all over the place. Click its secondary move. Just sleep talk. In this generation, sleep talk can call rest rather than failing, which is one of the reasons why sleep talk rest is so good. Also known as rest talk. Suicune doesn't fit on offense. Vappy. Um, Vappy absorbs Eggy, kind of, because Eggy doesn't always run Giga Drain. You can also pivot out of that. But uh, Eggy most commonly leads off with Psychic, which does kind of sting. Um, it absorbs Jinx, and it absorbs Nidoking. It doesn't really absorb Gengar, because you're not switching Vappy into Gengar most of the time. Um, yeah. We already talked about how Zapdos absorbs sleep. Any super common. We'll talk about Moltres as a sleep talker. Because it almost always runs sleep talk. Um, it. Moltres is like. It clicks two buttons Sunny Day and then Fire Blast. And then Rest Sleep Talk is just like. A nice add on. But if you, if you really think you're needing to absorb sleep, Moltres is pretty great at absorbing it from uh, Needle King. If there's a Nido King on the opposing team, you don't really mind absorbing sleep too much because all of your sleep talk rolls are good against it. And with a uh, sunny day up, its thunders are just going to start missing you. Don't really like absorbing it from Jinx, but you can pivot in and scare the crap out of the Jinx because but just Jinx does a huge chunk to you because you're not running lefties on a Moltres, you're running charcoal. Uh, you're not switching that thing into a Gengar because you're going to get thunderbolted and cry. 
and uh, you're not switching it into a Snorlax. Snorlax is supposed to be switching into you with using um, Moltres. So those are the common sleepers. I think I got them all. There's the UUBL sleepers, but those mostly function similarly to Eggie or Nidoking. Okay, yeah, that was the sleepers and their dynamics.